thank, thank you all for coming. Uh, I really appreciate it. Uh, my name is Jaroslav Zedze, uh, but people call me DJ. It's easier, especially not for not non-Polish people, right? Because it's a Polish name, it's hard to pronounce for uh, other nations, right? Um, generally, uh, I am an interior designer. I studied uh, interior design in Gdańsk uh, Fine Arts Academy. And I slowly, throughout my career, like gradually shifted towards CGI and uh, 3D generalism in, yeah, as my core thing. Like I'm doing uh, 3D modeling, texturing, animation, uh, other things like that. And uh, this presentation I will be doing is about plants. So it's titled, I love it when a great plant comes, plant comes together. Obviously, some of you might have uh, watched the 80s series, The A-Team. So it's like a paraphrase of uh, Hannibal Smith. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping this presentation will be fun. So maybe uh, I'll show first a little bit of my work, what I do. Uh, currently, I'm working for CG Boost as a, as a community manager. Uh, so helping people learn Blender like overcome some roadblocks and uh, general help. Uh, and I also have been working for a year for Grasswald, uh, so the uh, library of 3D scanned, 3D modeled uh, assets, photorealistic um, assets. And uh, I have uh, permission to use some of the, some of the like work in progress stuff uh, from, from the pipeline uh, from Julius Harling. So uh, I really appreciate it. Thank you, Julius. Um, so just a quick introduction, my show reel. Thank you very much. Uh, this is Blender. I will be using Blender for today's presentation. Uh, for the work uh, at Grasswald, uh, at Grasswald, uh, we were using some in-house tools, but uh, I will be sticking to vanilla Blender, so no add-ons. Uh, hopefully, this will be useful for all of you. Uh, but first, before we jump into Blender, I want to talk a little bit about uh, the presentation, what it's all about, and um, maybe maybe why, why plants are interesting and why do I find them uh, yeah, really fun, to be honest. Uh, uh, and I never thought I'd, that I would find plants th that interesting. Like, uh, I don't know how, how many of you have read uh, the books by Tove, Tove Jansson. I see some faces there, recognizing the moomins. There was like a kind of creatures there, they, they were called hemulans and as a child, I thought that these were like the most unpleasant ones. Like uh, I, I never wanted to be like them, really. Uh, and uh, the specific thing is that they really like order. I considered myself more chaotic, like creative, and uh, they, are, they like order, order rules. And they were really interested in plants, so like collecting plants, looking at them with a magnifying glass. So the irony is, I turned out to be uh, one myself. Like right now, I'm walking around my neighborhood and just like obsessively watching plants up close, like people probably think I'm crazy sometimes. So yeah, but plants are not really boring, you know, plants were really like almost like, uh, almost even uh, pop, uh, using pop culture as, uh, you know, monsters. I don't know if, you feel, if you've ever seen the horror movie, The Day of the Triffids. This is like 3D, uh, like, like plants invading from space, eating people alive, really scary but uh, they are really scary in nature as well. No? This, is, this is near my neighborhood. 
yeah, with a little of <laughs> little cre creative twist from me. So beware, plants are also dangerous. Um, they can s uh, kind of suck you in and and they really captivate your attention. So uh, why do I show th these references? Because references are the starting point for all of the plant work. Uh, we really need to learn to see the plants before we uh, recreate them in uh, 3D. Because um, mm, like the point of my presentation, like the, the course will be first analyzing the plants and then trying to recreate them, them uh, in Blender. And I won't be using like uh, I won't be doing like the whole process because it's like a super laborious task and 50 minutes is not enough time for uh, the whole process. And that was also not like part of my job. We already received some scanned assets from the scanning team at Grassfeld. Uh, so if you're really interested in uh, that part of the process, like photogrammetry, I highly recommend watching. If you haven't watched uh, Gleb Alexandrov's talk, and he's like a really great professional. And I sh I'm sure he can tell uh, much more about uh, how to get those scanned parts really, really uh, good quality. Um, so let's take a look at uh, the plants. Uh, I will be uh, using like a um, specific plant for, for this presentation. Uh, and it will be, let me just open up Blender. It will be a plant that I've uh, already assembled for Grasswald, so uh, the common hop. Let me just open the... We're in Amsterdam, so this is... Uh, not, not this file. Sorry. Yeah, that's another plant that uh, Amsterdam is famous for. And the uh, interesting thing that I've learned while, while preparing this presentation is that actually the plant Cannabis sativa, this one, is like the same plant family uh, as the common hop, which I will be assembling. Yeah, but I'm not really a smoker, so... I'd rather, I'd rather have a beer. So, and Amsterdam is famous for, for a brewery as well. So let's open up the correct file. Oh, this one. Oh, it's, it needs some time. Yeah, but plants, uh, plants need time as well. We have to be patient. We have to do it slowly not to lose all the details uh, that are important. And I'm really going to focus on the details here um, because, mm, because uh, mm, the problem with 3D plants all, often, and also especially when they are automatically generated by uh, procedural alg algorithms, if they don't take into account like, all, the, uh, all the details that are in the world, it's really easy to, to achieve something that kind of resembles a plant but it's not fully like, to the point uh, in nature. Uh, and I'll be explaining why, why that happens and uh, hopefully give some tips how to, how to approach this and what's the benefit of, of like, the manual approach to modeling plants. It's just loading the textures. Really, really good scans. Um, so maybe while we're waiting for the texture to load, uh, let's have a look at the references. So it's nice to have your, your own pictures of plants and uh, even better if you take a look at them uh, in the real world, like in 3D, because uh, that gives like even better, uh, better feeling of the plant uh, than just watching the photos, which are flat. And plants are really, really th three-dimensional, really complicated forms. Uh, and there are a few uh, key points that I wanna, uh, that I wanna like emphasize in the common hop especially uh, and, that, and that's why I picked the plant because it's really interesting uh, one of the key things that makes the plant look as it looks like is the way that it's interacting with the environment it's a climber plant mm, so its name is common hop and I wasn't really like aware how common it is and in my neighborhood there's, there's a lot of specimens of this uh, and I took some pictures while walking so you can see it climbs uh, some fences, climbs, climbs other plants. It's got stuck again. All right. Let's be patient. It climbs walls, passes the walls. Seems like it's destroying everything. <laughs> really dangerous. I would, I would watch out if I would, was this guy. Um, and it's also interacting with itself. So it's kind of like sometimes searching for some point of 
of uh, support, and if it doesn't find it, it just turns back and climbs itself. So it's really interesting. Um, all right, so um, there are also like little things that are easy to, uh, to omit when analyzing plants. There are leaf shapes that are the most typical ones, the three, uh, three part ones, but there are also heart shaped ones in the same plant. And you might think that it's obvious that you know, the three part plant, uh, leaves grow out of the same point, like, like here, two of the same kind of leaves, but it also happens sometimes that from the same point, two different leaves grow out. So these little details make the real plants like not so easy to replicate automatically. Uh, at least you have to know it and manual uh, assembly of the plant is a really great way to observe. Um, okay, so leaf shapes, the leaf stalks, how they branch out out of the main stalk and how uh, they form an angle with the leaf. So a lot of reference, like it took, took hours for each plant uh, to, to really see how it, uh, how it looks like in nature. And there's also uh, factors like decay and you know, a lot of factors that are destroying the plant while it's there. You can see here's an old one. That's also like a, a specific characteristic of the common hop that it's not a one year growing plant, it's a perennial. So it's, it grows for many years. And you might also think that the common hop is like the plant with those uh, cones, right? The plants uh, have uh, their sex life, really. So they are male and female ones. Uh, the ones with those nice cones are female. Okay, so uh, sometimes uh, you, you wanna understand how the plant grows and it's uh, really a good practice to have a look at the young ones, like the sprouts because there you can easily see uh, like the growing pattern. Plants are growing like f uh, from, the t from the top. So uh, in the, already in that little specimen, you can see how it behaves. And later on, it's just like bigger and bigger. All right, I'm thinking that it's almost what we need for a start. Mm, and we can get to Blender. Of course, for a start, you need, as I mentioned, good scans. Um, and good scans, as I told you, uh, are not that easy to make. Uh, you can ask lab. It's, it, it demands some practice, some nice equipment, some, you know, some experimentation, and a lot of patience, and a lot of, a lot of photos. Uh, luckily, we have some already prepared uh, elements from from Grasswald. So this is how my blend file looks like uh, when I started assembling a plant. So where to start from? I started from uh, a stalk. Let's pick one of them. It's a little bit laggy. Maybe I'll turn off the We won't need that anymore now. Don't save. Okay. So it should be faster now. Um, so what to do with this kind of a, scan, a scanned um, object? Like we, we can keep it as it is, but what's really interesting is we, when we can change the shape because you know, when, we, when you disassemble a plant, it kind of behaves a little bit differently than in an environment. So a good way of uh, having a control over that thing is uh, making an armature for it. Right, so I'll show you quickly how you can do that. So I'll just duplicate this, put it on here. And generally we'll be on I forgot one thing, sorry. Let's, let's maybe make a quick, uh, quick introduction to the whole process uh, and play a short video. I want to impersonate, because uh, you know, plants are really hard work, so maybe you're lazy and you don't want to do it, so I'm, I'm going to try a one minute approach to that, uh, just like the lazy tutorials from 
Ian Hubert. So let's let's try it and let's see if it works. So generally, how you start? Just take a stalk, make an armature for it, then it bends. You connect one to the other. Don't forget the tip. Yeah, just blend it, put it together. It's nicely forming. I'll put on the little leaves. They form them. Some more leaves. Join it all together. Just remember to shape it because it's not flat. Yeah, just a little touch ups. And those little thingies, the, the, uh, these are also important. Don't miss them. Okay, join everything together and repeat, repeat, repeat. And you get yourself a nice little plant. But if you want to have young little plants, you need some cones. Okay, so just put them together. A few of them. And there you go. Easy peasy. Yep, we might end on that one, but I guess we have to slow it down a bit. So that, so that you can actually know what's happening, right? Um, so, if we have that kind of a stalk, uh, and we want to achieve something like that, so that we, when we go to the pose mode, we can just bend it, right? It's good to have the, the geometry quite clean. So let's have a look at the scan. Yeah, it's all triangulated. I prefer, uh, I prefer um, to make the quads uh, instead of triangles, at least for that process. So uh, trace to quads. I also, sometimes this, these scans had some, uh, some double verts or stuff like that, so just merge by distance and uh, make a threshold that's suitable. I'm just doing this because uh, it's useful, oh, maybe too much, uh, it's zero, zero, four, right? Uh, too much, let's repeat. Merge by distance, one more zero. Ah, should, be, should be fine, okay. And now, how to, how to make a rig, a rig for this one? Let's just select one edge here. If we're lucky, it's going through whole length. Oh, we're lucky, yes. Sometimes it's a little bit more complicated. You, you need to select uh, a few edges and then just select more with the shift. But that's not really hard. Uh, so if you select it, duplicate it. And actually, that's a, uh, this amateur trick is uh, one that I learned from Stephen Scott, so thanks. And now we have separated this, uh, separated this selection. Okay, we have another mesh here. That's kind of following the shape, but I want to be, uh, want, yeah, I want it to be it in the middle of it. So how to do that? I'll just, uh, I'll just uh, move it, but uh, let's do it along the normal. So I'm just extruding it, selecting all of it. And now I can scale, uh, scale along the normals, so I can kind of blend it inside. Yeah, nice. If I take a look at the whole thing, I can select the other edge. I don't need it anymore, so I'm just getting rid of it. But it's not really even, so let's use the great add-on um, called loop tools, right? Now I can space all the points, and I have something that's kind of useful for my purpose, but this is just a mesh, how to turn it into an armature. There's a little trick that you can do. Um, you just apply a modifier, a skin modifier. All right, some blob appeared, but don't worry. This is just for this little button. Let's create an armature. Boom, oh, it produced something weird. I'll tell you why, uh, let's, let's Control Z, back one step. If you go into the edit mode, you can see that little circle. It's the root of, of the skinned mesh. So let's put it in, into the first vert, right? Let's mark this as root. 
Okay, now the circle is around the first vert and it should work fine now. If we leave that uh, edit mode and press create armature, now oh, it's fine. Now all we need to do is just like parent this little stalk. So control P with automatic weights and let's hope for the best. Yeah, it did work. Usually with this kind of shape, it works if, if the geometry is, uh, is pretty watertight and, and good. So now if we select the stalk and go to pose mode, we should have nice, a nice bending thing, right? And it's a really nice way of, uh, of um, deforming such a climber plant because you have like bones all over the place and you can select even like a part of it, just a few bones and rotate it. But uh, the key thing is here to have the individual origins for the bones. So like each bone is rotating around its own origin and it's, it's kind of looking like very flexible, like a deforming stalk. Also one, one useful feature for this kind of deformation is uh, the auto IK here. So I can select one bone and it kind of like, when I grab it, it kind of like resembles something springy. All right. And if you grab it, you can see that uh, little line here, maybe I'll just scroll the mouse wheel so it, you can kind of like control the length of it, right? You, this is also a nice way of straightening it all out, right? So now it's super straight and we can start from scratch, right? The bending. So you have, if you have some stalk that's uh, having like a specific shape, now you can shape it into something different and it still look, looks good. All right, but that's just a stalk. We need all the other parts, right? I'll just reset the rotations right now. Uh, Alt R, right? Alt R, okay. Let's keep it clean and let's go to the object mode again. So now let's get rid of the blob and let's start adding the other parts. So first of all, like in the one minute tutorial, we need the little tip. I'll copy this one. It's looking nice. So control D. Oh, it's parented there. So let's just clear the parent. Mm, Alt P. Yeah. Clear parent. Oh, it's gone. All right, so let's put it here. We can all just place it like that and scale it so that it fits. Later on, it shouldn't be visible if we, if we place it correctly. We can also use the bone here for the placement. Snap the cursor, now snap it. All right, that's better. And it's a lot of that kind of tweaking. It's good to look from time to time to the reference and see how, how the plant really looks like here. Maybe it, sh it should have like some additional li little leaves here. But I'll just move on forward because the time is running, right? Now we're already, already quite far. Uh, so let's, let's go on and add some leaves. Mm, but what if we want to now uh, change this uh, whole shape? So let's parent this thing to the bone, right? So select the bone. And that's, that's the trick I will be using to kind of keep this modular and yet deformable. So that one, select this with shift and control P to bone, right? So now when I deform the whole thing, the tip follows. All right. Let's pick uh, another one. Um, this little leaf like uh, looks nice. Or maybe something like this. Oh, this one is okay. Let's just duplicate it. The first leaves that are uh, growing out of these first points are usually kind of undeveloped yet. So this is a perfect one. It's good to have a look at the whole uh, atlas of all the scanned parts and see uh, what's working for, for which part. Like the, these are a lot of you know, different stages of, of leaves. And it's good to, to place them in the correct place, right? So 
what if you have like a, a little bit too uh, um, too little elements? Well, you can still use the same ones, but just uh, remember to deform it a little bit. If you if you go to the edit mode and you just uh, change the shape slightly, it shouldn't be very visible that it's the same leaf again anymore. But you work with what you have, right? So another one uh, thing that's uh, good to observe is that the uh, leaves are following specific rules. Um, usually there are a few factors that are affecting this, like uh, they're, growing, they're growing out of the same point for the common hop, uh, but they are usually pointing upwards uh, towards the light. So, um, and also um, each point is kind of like twisted, but it's, yeah. Uh, it's good to, to kind of like see that most of the leaves are, point, uh, are kind of like pointing in the same same-ish direction, right? But because it's also dependent on the gravity, on the size of the leaf and, and the surroundings, right? So let's also select a bone here and connect this the same way. Right, so we have something now. No, 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 not that. Okay, it's good to be aware where, where you're at in terms of modes, right? Now we can do it, all right. It's really nice and you can use it then to animate those little, you know, time-lapse videos where the plant is moving or growing, right? If you scale it, scale this bone, maybe an additional bone for these ones would also be good just to be able to scale the leaves independent, independently of the stalk. Okay, but we don't have time to make everything perfect because we have to move on. Mm -hmm. If you wanna, what if you wanna keep the leaf uh, non-destructively non -destructively deformable? Uh, well, there's a nice object uh, that's, well, you can use, of course, an arm armature, which is quite good. You know, I have this prepared here. Just the same as for the stalk. You can then go and bend the leaves. But then you have to edit uh, the mesh in the edit mode, which is quite destructive, right? But using proportional editing is also like a good technique and also sometimes I use it because the leaves uh, that are scanned are usually scanned you know, flat on the surface and this is, this is not the, uh, how they really behave in the real world, right? They are more of like uh, V-shaped or some small deformations, right? So, so it's good to implement this either in edit mode or you can also, and that's actually how we did it uh, in Grasspout you can just place a lattice. Of course, you need to scale it correctly and place it so that it fits, right? All right, so uh, it kind of fits the leaf, but this kind of lattice is like uh, not the best for, for the leaf. I'll just set it up as a as uh, one dimensional in this direction and a little bit more subdivisions in the other ones. And now just apply a lattice modifier to the leaf. It just moved. All right, so this, uh, no, it was all done automatically by the add-on, so I, <laughs> let's not waste time for that. You, you get the idea, you have the lattice, you have to place it correctly, you know, those little things in Blender. Um, 
and now you can kind of deform it independently for each part of the mesh, and it's really nice. So you keep the original mesh, but you have the modifier, so you can play it, play with it, and if you duplicate the same leaf with the lattice, you can have like different versions of the same scan. All right, so let's, um, let's have a look at how to uh, join the leaf and the stalk, because these bigger ones, uh, I tend to uh, have them in separate parts, just because they're uh, usually forming an angle like this uh, with the stalk. And I also, I think I parented this already um, oh, so that you can yeah, deform the stalk however you want, because sometimes these leaves grow like uh, from the stalk and then forming like a little bit of a band. So they grow out like downwards, for example, and quickly bend upwards. And the other one is, is doing it uh, something like the, the other way, right? So um, let's get rid of those annotations. I think this one is too big for this spot, so I'll place it here. Here's something smaller, right? So in these little leaves, I think it's less no noticeable that the leaves are the same, but for the other ones, I want to have like a different scan, right? So oh, these two are perfect for this part. All right, I think I'm running out of time, so maybe you know you just get the idea that this is the repetition of the whole thing. But there are little things that uh, are easy to omit when you omit when you are making such a plant, and these are the little thingies here, like the stipulis. Um, if you take a look at the close-ups of, of the plants, and this is common for for a lot of plants that they have uh, these branching out points for the stalks, and they have like these little parts. So this is quite quite important. Ah, oh, yeah. Thanks. Those little, little things that sometimes you forget. Uh, and it's flat as well, right? And we need to kind of bend it. So let's now proportional editing is quite useful. I want to have it wrapping around. Wrap around the stalk. All right. So now just placing it in the correct place. Let's pick the bone, the cursor. So you can see it's quite time consuming uh, if, you, if you're doing this manually, but it pays off at the end, like, uh, you know. Select all of it, go to pose mode. And now, they usually bend outwards like that. Maybe it's too much. All right. Mm -hmm. Have to be careful.
Ah, well, that, that'll do. Okay, so you have to repeat that process for all of this, and at the end, you're, you're left with something that resembles this kind of thing. And that's more like it. Um, so how much time do we have left? 20 minutes, right? So maybe we'll we'll do all the, uh, also the cones. Like, in fact, uh, the plants that were uh, that I was assembling, the the hops that were assembled for Graswald, they they were in a specific time of the of the year, and that's also like, like an important part in plants. They have like a, a life cycle, and it's not the same in the in, in every uh, season, right? So they were they were scanned in spring. So they had no, no cones. And now, let's say I have a brewery that's in need for some you know, render with, with cones. What to do? I have no cones scanned. Okay, sometimes we can cheat, right? Can we? Of course, it's best if you have something scanned, but you know, these little stipuli, they kind of, kind of resemble the parts that uh, are used for the cones. So here I already assembled some you know, just edited, edited the shader a little bit, and it kind of looks okay. Maybe not perfect, but it's, it works, right? So not recommend this uh, technique for all the times, but if you're in a hurry, that's a good way. And it's all done by, by just modeling and, uh, yeah, just modifying a little bit the shapes of it. And it's kind of kind of uh, working. All right, I think I'll be heading towards the end of this. Like, it would be like quite repetitive, you know, uh, just tweaking each each part and like taking a look at uh, how we can uh, how we can, you know, make it more uh, close to the reference. Maybe add some uh, destroyed leaves uh, in the bottom because, like, you know, there's like animals biting off the pieces of, of um, the leaves and stuff like that. Uh, but let's make it uh, a little bit more fun and try to make a little scene out of it, right? So how, how to put that plant, because uh, maybe you get a ready-made plant and you want to just have fun with it. So now you know how to make an armature for that. And let's open my other file. One. Just waiting a little bit. Uh, so maybe I'll talk a little bit about the shaders as well, because uh, the shaders were coming uh, from the scanning team uh, together with, uh, you know, with the scanned models. But we had to check uh, some uh, check some um, roughness maps and stuff like that, uh, and the roughness map is uh, a tricky part because uh, let's maybe get back to the to the reference board. Mm -hmm. Let's load it. It's full of photos, so it takes a little bit of time. Uh, and the uh, roughness of the of the plant is kind of like not uh, constant because uh, it's uh, dependent on the environment. Right now we have like a, quite like a rainy, foggy after uh, weather in Amsterdam, so prob probably most of the plants are wet. And when I, they are wet, they are like shiny, specular, uh, and also it kind of depends. Uh, for example, if a, if a plant is like next to a, a dusty road then the, the leaves are catching the dust and they can be uh, really, really diffuse. So uh, having that knowledge is also useful and that also comes from observation, like you really need to observe. And I think that this is the word that I really want you to uh, get out of this, uh, get out of this uh, presentation, observation. Oh, this is a scene I made. I know this is not allowed with Blender logo. Sorry, it's, it, 
was a joke. I just couldn't resist. So we have a fence here, and thanks for the assets uh, Blender Kit. It, it was from Blender Kit, so a lot of assets here, and our plants from Gaspald. So let's take the material preview. So let's wait for the shaders to load. Uh, so one more thing that is important in terms of shaders in plants is uh, that plants are translucent. And this is uh, like um, very crucial, especially if you, if you have a strong lighting. But it's generally, even if it's not visible, it's affecting how the plant is looking. Uh, because, uh, you know, um, even, if, if, even if you like, don't see the plant, um, on the other side of the light, when that translucency is obvious, um, I'll show it in the reference board, like this, right? These are the photos that kind of like are obvious. The light uh, that's going through the leaves is scattered all across the plant, so that's why plants are really greener than, than anything else, because, yeah, they just uh, make the light pass through, through the leaves and it's colored already, so. if it loads. It takes patience. That's why it's nice to have a nice library of pre-made assets and not have to go through the pain, right? But it's also fun, I guess. All right. This one, uh, this is the, the Blender kit add-on, so yeah. I was just us using some assets from, the, from that library to just quickly assemble a scene. All right, let's, I, I think like Blender just hung up. The computer didn't handle it, uh, so. I guess that's uh, most of what I have prepared for, for the presentation. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Mm -hmm. oh, Rico. Okay, um, scan resolutions. What kind of resolutions are your base maps using? Uh, I think it was like 4K, like what we received, but this was also like, uh, um, there was like a system of LODs, right? So uh, the meshes were all, but this wasn't like part of our job. It was uh, automated by, by the yeah by the in-house tools. So yeah, we we were assembling in the biggest LOD, like the most with the most resolution to make the plant really look up close, nicely, and uh, then it's like yeah, it's easier to to like destroy stuff than build up, right? It's upscale. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. I far, yeah. Far away yeah, I think uh, you know th they were scanning them on the on a flat plane. But yeah, this wasn't by, like part of my job exactly. But but the scanning team. But uh, yes, from what I, from what I know, it was like uh, mirrored stuff. Like so, yeah. so it was like blended together, but it was mirrored uh, on the other side. Right. So. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay, but I think I already answered it myself by completely really what you did. But I was wondering first, so why not uh, make it a spline IK, which looks like a couple of controls? Mm -hmm. um, oh, but then I realized while making it that uh, selecting like a couple of tools and rotating makes it very natural for a plant. For a plant. Mm -hmm. So I'm assuming that that is the, the reason. Mm -hmm. the yeah, yeah, that, that, uh, well, Probably there are many ways of, of doing that, but you know, having like an armature and like deforming it, is, it's kind of like, it allows for like a replication of, of how, you know, something bendy uh, works. Yeah, right? I mean, yeah, mm -hmm. like a spline IK would mm -hmm. be easier to just like a couple of control points and you can just, and it follows along, but 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes these plants are also like kind of uh, rapidly turn, right? It's yes. not like always like, like smooth curve. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, you can you can take a look at the, uh, at some references. Like sometimes it's, it seems like it's almost breaking, uh, right? It's really tangled and. Oh. Of course, the, these assemblies were also like uh, not these extreme cases, right? right yeah. They were kind of like. Uh, scanned from a field of, of other, you know, uh, I think it was a meadow, a kind of uh, hop, so it's, it's a little bit more uh, generic. It's, it's less like these uh, fence ones, which are kind of, yeah, one-sided. Right, yeah, yeah. Any more questions? If yeah. you have like a hole uh, in the leaves that are eaten by snails or whatever, would you recommend modeling that or using a, like an alpha texture for the, for the hole? Mm -hmm. I think I think uh, uh, yeah, uh, alpha texture works fine for that. You know, it's, if it's if it's done well, you can also like m make uh, some texture painting stuff uh, in terms of making this de decay and just like overlaying on a ready scanned mm -hmm. part. And it's I always thought that because of the rendering in Pago, if you use alpha, then you need a lot more transmission samples. Yeah, but uh, you know, uh, it's always like a game of uh, balance, right? You have to, uh, if you're if you're doing like a plant that will be viewed up close, uh, I think it's uh, yeah, uh, it's uh, it's worth it, right? Because uh, alpha map can be like, especially if you have a scan thing, modeling this up like with all the details in the model is like super high poly, right? And uh, with a scan. Uh, scan the alpha map, you can have it really, really detailed and the model is quite, you know, optimized, so to speak, right? So in terms of poly count, especially that there are many leaves usually, right? Any more questions, like, yeah, there? Yeah, actually, like, if, uh, yeah, real time, real time is not like my biggest thing, but I'm, uh, I know that uh, the Grassvault uh, library, like, it was automatically like cre uh, creating LODs for, for all the assets, and like the lower poly, of course, they were not as realistic, right? But uh, they're also like n not meant to view, to be viewed like up close, like for for these kind of like ad shots or stuff like that. So there's a, there's a, there's a difference, right? But it's good to start from a, from something like really, really detailed and then just destroy it. So any, anything else that you would like to know from me? If you, if you have any questions, like I'll, I'll be free to talk with anyone interested after the talk. Ah, that's, uh, I still have some ending words, right? So, so thanks for, thanks for the uh, for the um, reminder, right? Uh, so first of all, thank you all for coming and for for the patience and for all the hiccups, uh, technical hiccups. But I'm hoping that it was at least a little bit interesting and I've, and that you got something out of it. Uh, and I want to again thank. Uh, Mm, the Grassvald team that uh, allowed for, for presenting these uh, tips from, from the Swarflow. And I cannot thank enough uh, Arthur Ullman, uh, the head of 3D uh, there, uh, when I was working at least, uh, and Aaron Springer for um, provide, providing feedback. And that's the, like for, for final kind of summary takeaways, like first, the key thing, uh, of course, the Tools and techniques are different. You know, you can use geometry nodes, whatever you want to use for 3D. But the key thing is like to really, really learn to observe and to see uh, what's uh, happening with the planet in the real world, and then to bring it into into 3D. And uh, it's really easy to lose uh, sight when you are working on such a project and working for really long. So another key thing is getting feedback, and that's even if you're like really detailed obsessed, but if you look for, uh, at something for too long, you can kind of start losing uh, the sight. And you really need these uh, other pair of eyes to help you 
start seeing again. And that's, that was the role of uh, Aaron for me. Uh, he always applied, uh, gave super accurate feedback of little, you know, angle differences and like shape differences in the plants. And that really made uh, the plants work so much better than if I was doing this all by myself. So thank you again, Aaron. And thanks, uh, Julius Harling, uh, from uh, the CEO of Grassvault for allowing for making this presentation with, the, uh, with their scans. Uh, and I'll mention the podcast. I also like run a podcast, uh, Subsurface Talks. If you haven't seen the lightning talks, uh, you, can, you can find it on YouTube. Let's just hope that it works. I'll just quickly search for it and show it to you. All right. This is all. So you can search for this channel and there are talks with uh, interesting guests. Some of them are here in the conference. Some of them are, were uh, last year. Uh, really great Blender people doing amazing stuff and I'm always interested in talking about uh, people doing great stuff with Blender and in 3D in general. So uh, if you wanna have a chat, please let me know. We can schedule a call and record a podcast episode together. So thank you again. And um, the end slide. The end slide. Well, yeah. There you go.